Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll check out the Card Tornado MVP build of Novus Guardians in RO 2.0. The Novus Guardian is currently in high demand when forming parties for Tanatos Tower as they can deal insane amounts of damage over time with their Cartnado skill. They are also one of the few classes that can solo hunt and dominate the MVP board. We'll discuss in detail the recommended stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, and tips to increase the power of Cartnado which will help you secure MVPs in the field and clear instances quickly. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to bring out the highest potential of your Novus Guardian character. If you appreciate these types of videos, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. Cardnado is an AoE skill that creates a tornado on a designated area on the ground, dealing wind element physical damage over time to all enemies within 3 meters. The tornado deals 1 tick of damage per second, and it lasts for 4 seconds. The damage of Cartnado is based primarily on the damage of the advanced novice skill Cart Attack. Thus, the higher the damage modifiers of Cart Attack, the higher is the damage output of Cartnado. It can also slow down enemies with a Cart Tornado Storm Enhancement skill. The most important factor when deciding to build a Cartnado Novice Guardian is your luck in getting the ideal advanced runes. First, you need a Ruthless Slash Class S rune with a third line activated. This is a must for this build as it will totally ignore the physical defense of enemies hit by cart attack as well as cart nato, and thus you won't need to prioritize investing in any ignore depth stat. Another must have advanced rune is the Swift Storm Star rune with a third line activated, as it can generate another cart nato on yourself, doubling your damage output. These two runes alone can significantly boost your cart nato's damage over time. Currently, there are various builds for Cartnado for PvE. The most common is a Cartnado Flea build, which utilizes the effects of Vinked Magic Bracelet to convert Flea into more attack. We'll be focusing on the Flea build as it is cheaper to build but can still deal insane amounts of damage. Up next, let's discuss the stats that can increase the power of Cartnado. You first need to prioritize putting points on strength as it is a stat that directly increases melee physical attack. Hence, it will be the foundation for increasing your overall DPS. Second, we have Dex, which increases hit and thus ensures that your skills will land on the target. Getting at least 400 hit would be enough in PvE as boss monsters usually don't have a lot of flea. Dex also reduces the variable cast time or VCT of your skills. Cartnado has a VCT of 4 seconds, so you need to ensure that you have enough Dex to insta-cast it. Furthermore, decks can also increase melee attack wherein every 5 decks will give one attack. Third, a lot points on Agi to boost your flea which can help you avoid some attacks of boss monsters. Flea may also increase your attack if you use the Vink Magic Bracelet for offhand and undershirt for garment. Having 500 flea is a must to get the full attack percent bonus of Vink Magic Bracelet. And lastly, a lot your remaining points on Vit for survivability. A good balance between offensive and defensive stats will be vital in solo hunting MVPs. Aside from increasing the aforementioned stats, should also boost the following attributes. First is Penetration, which lowers the enemy's damage reduction stat in the damage calculation. There is no cap to pen so it's possible to lower the enemy's damage reduction to a negative value, and thus raise your damage. Second is Skill Damage and Physical Damage Increase, which increases your final damage output. Third is Movement Speed. Due to the Cart Attack Rapidity Ace your runes that increase the damage of Cart Attack by 0.8% for each 1% increase in your movement speed. The movement speed cap is at 330% which is achievable with Moonlight Flower Star card. Fourth is Wind Damage since Cartnado is a forced wind element skill. And last are the Size, Element, Race, and Boss Damage modifiers which will depend on the monster you are fighting. As mentioned earlier, Ignore Death is not essential for the Cartnado build due to the third line effect of the Ruthless Slash Cast S rune. For MVPs that take some time to kill, it's also equally important to reduce your skill cooldown and cast delay to spam skills faster but without sacrificing your damage increasing stats. Up next, let's discuss the most important skills for this build. For the Advanced Novice second job, you should prioritize the following skills. First, get level 10 Cart Attack which is the basis for your Cart Nado damage. Then get level 10 Enhanced Cart for boosting attack when using Cart-related skills. After that, a lot points on level 10 Improved Flea for increasing Flea and Movement Speed. And lastly, get level 10 Blessing to increase Strength, 
DEX and INT by 20 points. Once you've reached Job Breakthrough, you can allot additional skill points on the breakthrough of all the aforementioned skills. Hence, you have level 20 Cart Attack, level 15 Improved Flea, and level 15 Blessing. As for the remaining 10 points, allot it on level 10 Increase Agility for a plus 20 Agi and plus 30% Movement Speed Gain with Blessing Buff. Once you've transferred to the Super Novice third job, the most important skills to get are as follows. First, get the self-buff skills such as level 5 cart boost for extra movement speed and attack, level 5 overthrust for 25% increase in attack, and level 10 inspiration for plus 10 to all attributes, plus 100 hit, and plus 100 attack. After that, get the level 15 vulture's eye for increased range and hit. The increased range for cartnado is very important for kiting boss monsters. Then get level 10 Axe Mastery for a plus 100 attack. As for the remaining 15 points, feel free to allocate it on any skill of your choice. If you prefer to play more offensively, you may get level 3 Bash as a prerequisite to level 1 Magnum Break, which grants plus 20% attack. Then get level 2 Gloria as prerequisite to Imposition Manus for more raw attack compared to Call Spirits. If you prefer to play more defensively, you may get Eden Team Blessing for protection against magic damage, Light Shield for protection against ranged physical damage, and Safety Wall for protection against melee damage. As for the last 20 points, you can only allot it on Force Focus which increases your max HP by up to 10,000. Once you've changed into the Novice Guardian 4th job, you can prioritize allocating your Time Quicksand on the following skills. First, get the Cart Tornado skill which will be your primary damaging skill. Its enhancement skill can reduce the enemy's movement speed by up to 70% which ensures that enemies will have difficulty escaping from the damage of Cart Nado. Next, get Hallucination Walk for increased movement speed, flee, crit resistance, and magic damage reduction, allowing you to reach max movement speed. However, this buff only lasts for 18 seconds and then will cause a movement speed debuff for 6 seconds. Then get Star's Guardian for survivability as it can remove abnormal status and reduce elemental damage by 25%. And lastly, allot your time quicksand on the following passive skills. First is Sun's Regents, which grants invincibility when revived. Do take note that this does not trigger with returning rune. Second is level 2 Life Perception as prerequisite for genetic modification, which increases your VIT and max HP gain per VIT. Its enhancement skill will also increase your max HP by up to 49%. Third and last is Light of Stars, which can deal damage when you receive physical attacks. Now that we understand the Cartnado related skills, let's discuss next the general skill setup when fighting boss monsters and clearing instances. First, check if all the essential buffs are in prepare for elite, such as Blessing, Cart Boost, Overthrust, Inspiration, Imposition Manus, and Hallucination Walk then manually cast Prepare for Elite. After that, you can start auto battle with just Cartnado on auto. Then go near the boss monsters so that they'll be hit with additional Cartnado formed by you. While Cartnado is in cooldown, you may opt to cast other skills such as Magnum Break for attack increase. If you are using Materia's Leash or Fox Teeth, you may also insert Speeding Up which is also very useful when Hallucination Walk is on penalty. Then always equip your mount after casting a skill for a higher movement speed and thus higher Cartnado damage. Getting a mount with 50% movement speed is a must for more damage. For survivability, you can manually cast defensive skills such as Star's Guardian, Eden Team Blessing, Light Shield, and Safety Wall. Make sure to observe your buffs carefully and manually recast them when needed. Up next, let's discuss the most important runes to get. For Acer Monument, these are the essential runes that can help increase your overall damage output. For Advanced Runes, we've already discussed in the first part of the video that there are 4 skill runes that can increase the damage of Cartnado. First is the Ruthless Slash Class S rune, with the third line activated which will totally ignore the physical defense of enemies when in overthrust status. 
High values in the first and second lines also help in boosting your damage. Second is the Swift Storm Star Rune with the third line activated, as it can generate another Cart Nado on yourself, doubling your damage output. Also aim for high values in the first and second lines for increasing your damage. Lastly, we have the Charge Burst Class S Rune and the Rapid Crash Class A Rune with high percentage for Cart Attack damage, as this will also increase the damage of Cart Nado. However, their increased range and hit does not affect Cart Nado. For Auxiliary Runes, the most important would be the Returning Rune Class S Rune, as it can resurrect you upon death, recovering to full HP and SP. It also grants Steel Body status with no negative effects upon resurrection. As for the Attribute Runes, prioritize upgrading the following to increase your damage. Up next, let's dive into the suggested equipment set and cards. For weapon, the only option is the use of a Sir Axe for a higher cart attack damage. You need to refine it to plus 10 and upgrade it to tier 8 to get more attack, strength, and damage to large sized monsters. After that, you can synthesize it to Destroyer's War Axe for a huge boost in overall damage. Refining it to plus 15 will grant higher cart attack damage and damage to large sized monsters. For weapon enchantment, aim for a high PDI or strength stat and sharp blade for fourth enchant. For weapon cards, just use cards that provide damage increase to large size and MVP monsters. For offhand, the best option for this build is a Vink Magic Bracelet which grants more attack with every flea you have. It can even increase physical attack and penetration by 8% at plus 15 refinement. For offhand enchantment, aim for high PDI or strength stat and armor breaking for fourth enchant. For offhand cards, you may use any of the following cards. Only use Aqua Elemental card and Reflecia Star card if your team converts the boss into water in Tanada's Tower. For armor, the options are the Chosen's Armor or Greed Shirt. In terms of damage, Greed Shirt will be the better option especially at plus 15 refinement, wherein it grants 15% physical damage and 21% attack. But for versatility in both PvE and PvP, you can use the Chosen's Armor. For armor enchantment, aim for high PDI or strength stat. For armor cards, the best in slot would be the heart card for plus 10% damage to boss monsters. In Tanatus Tower, you may use a Seroma card if converting the boss to water. For garment, you may use an undershirt for early to mid game since it gives attack for every 10 flea which synergizes with Vink's magic bracelet. However, the best in slot for late game is a high refined white duke's manteau since it increases attack by 3% and skill damage by 8% at plus 15 refinement. Every 1% ignore death you have will also grant an increase in attack. For garment enchantment, just aim for a high attack or PDI stat. For garment cards, you can use any of the following cards. For footgear, the options are either the Little Fairy Slippers, which is a synth version of Wolf Grandmother's Slippers, or the St. Mary's Cloth Shoes, which is a synth version of Ruin Boots. The former grants 7% melee physical damage at plus 15, while the latter grants plus 16% attack at plus 15. If you use a lot of multi-job classes, then St. Mary's Cloth Shoes is more versatile as it can be equipped by all T2 and above job classes. For footgear enchantment, just aim for a high attack or PDI stat. For footgear cards, you can use any of the following cards, but the best in slot would be a Moonlight Flower Star card. Aside from the permanent 30% increase in movement speed, you won't be affected by any movement speed reduction, such as the penalty of a hallucination walk. For accessory, you may just use a materials leash and couple it with any attack accessory that has high PDI and sharp blade forth enchant. The speeding up skill gained from materials leash can be used to help reach 330% movement speed. However, if you can already reach max movement speed even without the buff from speeding up, then it's better to use other accessories such as Hermit's Bundle for boosting strength, melee physical damage and attack percentage, Cat Paw Stamp for additional strength, dex and pen, or Ring of Contract for a very high strength and attack percentage. For accessory cards, you may just use any element or race damage modifier cards depending on the monster you are fighting. But if you don't want to switch cards, then you may use any of the following. For Tanatus Tower, the best in slot would be 2 Galleon cards for increased damage to water monsters. For headgears, there's a lot of options available for both gacha and non-gacha. I'll be showing my top 5 recommendations for each slot and just choose depending on which stat you are lacking. For the head, you may use Norma the Unicorn, plus 6 Dawn Flute, 
plus 6 Abyssal Cry, a High Refine Eye of Flame Spirit, or a High Refine White Knight Helm. For enchantment, aim for high strength and attack stats. For headwear cards, you may use any of the following for increasing damage. For face item, you may use a High Refine Epic Spirit Lightning, Winter Crown, plus 10 Silent Sinking, Juggling Queen, or Star Picking Phantom Thief. For enchantment, just aim for a high PDI, strength, or attack stats. For mouth item, you may use Light Food, Cloud Pillow Dream, Dream Move Silk, Butterfly Breath, or Moonhound's Tail. For enchantment, just aim for a high attack stat. For back item, you may use the Wrath Greasy Fallen Feather, Fate Wheel, Love Goddess, Dark Moonshine, or Baby Owl. For enchantment, just aim for a high strength and attack stats. And lastly, for the tail item, you may use the Flying Quarterback, Thunder Sun, Prince of Thunder, a High Refined Summer Banana Split, or Spirit's Blessing. Getting a Sharp Blade Fourth Enchant with a high PDI on your tail would be significant in increasing your attack power. Lastly, here are some other tips for increasing the power of your Cartnado. First, for pets, you may use either pets that can resurrect such as Abun and Osiris, or pets that can taunt enemies such as Orc Warrior and Orc Baby. There are also pets that can help increase your damage, such as the following. Second, make sure that the stats in your Guild Blessing and Guild Prayers are correct. Prioritize increasing your pen, attack, and win damage. You may also want to add points on neutral damage for increasing your cart attack damage. Third, for Oracle Mirror, you may extract the attack attributes of any of the following. A high refined combustible knife for boosting pen, a high refined build boost arm for increasing your damage to boss monsters, a high refined claw for more attack percentage, or wind hammer for plus 10% wind damage. Fourth, for Ancient Relics, the only option for blue relics is Wise Asai, but for purple relics, you can just choose depending on your playstyle in PvP. And lastly, invest in lots of attack unlock and deposit rewards in your adventure handbook. You should also invest in these cards and headgears, which provide damage increasing stat unlock and deposit rewards. Unlocking the following multi-jobs will also provide additional attributes. Alright, so far we've discussed the stats, skills, runes, equipment cards, and tips to help improve the damage of your Cartnado. I hope this video has helped you in your journey to become a more powerful Novus Guardian. If you reached this part of the video, thank you so much, you guys are the best. Comment down below which class guide you want to see next. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.